All right, so it looks like everyone's settled in here, so we'll go ahead and begin. Welcome, everyone, to today's webinar on the Cloud Call Center. Today's presentation will have two different sections. The first part will go over what we call the administrative side of the Cloud Call Center, what it entails to create a campaign, invite agents, add numbers, and so forth. And then the second part will go over the agent interface how to interact with the product while using it, what it looks like, and what the uh, different points on the screen are when actually on the dialer making calls. So first off, on a high level, what is the Cloud Call Center? We have several different products here at CallFire, voice broadcasting, text messaging, call tracking, IVRs. The Cloud Call Center is an auto dialer. To put that simply, it dials numbers and connects you live to people, similar to hand dialing them. It also lets you interact with the interface while speaking to each person. So it's a more effective way to connect with people live than hand dialing if you have a large list that you need to go through. So if you're a first time user to CallFire and you don't have an account, what you would do is go to callfire.com. We have different pricing options here. And basic pay as you go pricing is five cents per minute. So the way this product is billed is per minute while on the dialer. So the amount of time that you're spending on the dialer actually dialing is what you're billed for. You don't have any uh, other fees or any charges associated with creating campaigns or logging in as an administrator. It's only the time that you're spent on the dialer making calls. If you're doing a higher volume, we also have some monthly options available here. If you already have an account, all you would do to get started is log in up top. Select your account here. And before I go any further, just a quick note uh, for any of those that weren't here initially, if you have any questions at any point, just feel free to type them in the GoToWebinar question panel, and I'll get to them in the order received. We'll have a short break in the middle of the presentation to address any questions that may have arisen, and we'll also have some time at the end. So if I don't get to your question right away, I will get to it. Uh, just feel free to type it in at any time. Moving forward, once you log into your CallFire account, the first screen that you're brought to is the broadcast view, which is pertinent to the other products that we have here at CallFire. So for the purpose of this presentation, what we'll do is in the blue control panel over here on the left side of your screen, we're just going to click Call Center, and that'll take us to the Cloud Call Center product. And once you're there, the first view that you have is your dashboard. This is going to give you a an overview of the campaigns that you have active gives you a nice graph here, call distribution graph. You can also hit view all campaigns here, which will give you a historical view of your activity within this product. These are all the finished campaigns that I've ran. In either one of those views, to create a new campaign, what you'll do is simply just hit new campaign up top. And this will take you to the creation setup screen. It's a five step process. First one is just giving create Create and script is what we title it. You'd give the campaign a name. So we'll call this webinar 828, today's date. The next step is to set up caller ID. Now, the number that I have here is a number that I've already verified ownership of in my caller, in my call fire account. If I didn't have this number here, if I haven't done this before, and it's the first time I've ever using it, the system will require that I verify ownership of the number that I'm going to use as the caller ID, the number that the recipients of these calls are going to see as it coming from. The way that I would do that is I'd enter the number I want to use, the system will call that number, I pick up the call, and it reads me a four-digit verification code, which I then enter back into the screen here, and that's how I'm verifying that I own the number. You only have to go through that process the initial time and the, your call for account will save it globally every time thereafter, so you don't have to verify ownership of it every time. So I've already done that with this number. This is why it's going to allow me to use it without. But to reiterate, if I hadn't done that, it's just going to take me through a short verification process initially. 
The next step is decide whether I want to record all calls. You can record the calls with CallFire and no extra charge. One note about recording calls in the majority of areas, really, there are certain legalities around doing such. Uh, for example, in uh, the state of California, in order to record a call while using an auto dialer or any call, really, you have to have uh, let the person know, let the person that you're speaking to know that you're recording them. So that you'll find that in um, in most uh, areas or regions, they'll have similar laws to that. So just keep that in mind before you do that. The, the majority of times that calls are recorded are uh, for training purposes or if you're submitting some kind of application or if you're an insurance agent or a financial institution and uh, the recording is inherent in that application process. So just keep that in mind. If you want to record the calls, you simply check the box here. The next step will be the script. You can simply put anything pertinent to your use case. This will display on the screen while you're speaking to each person. So if you have telemarketers or agents making the calls for you, or you need to read some kind of legal term verbatim, it would be helpful to put it here so that you have it available right in front of you while you're speaking to each person. So once we're done that, we'll hit save and continue. And this will take us to the second step in the creation process, what we call the survey section. So this is where we create any kind of questions or dispositions that we want to have for the, the campaign that we're running. So let's say I'm a, a financial advisor or an insurance agent, something of that nature. And I'm, I'm prospecting a list and I want to ask them a couple questions to kind of qualify them as a customer. So what I'm gonna do here is predetermine what I wanna ask them. So let's say, what is your annual income? If I ask someone what their annual income is, they're gonna give me a numeric value. So I'll put as the answer or response type a number, which means for this question, I'll type in a number as the answer. And for the second question, we'll put what is your occupation or how about what, what is the industry that you're in? So that answer can vary. So we'll leave that as a text box, which simply means I'll type out the answer that they give me for this. And lastly, we'll put are you an existing customer? So that's a yes or no answer, which we'll put multiple choice. Yes or no. The way that'll manifest is it'll be two different radio buttons, one for each, so I can just click yes and or no, depending on what the answer is. So three different response types, numeric, text, or multiple choice here. So now that we're done with that, we'll just hit save and continue. The third step here is where we're gonna invite our agent. So an agent, is anyone that's going to be calling on the campaign, anyone that we have on our team or we're outsourcing a call. So in a lot of cases, the administrator is also the agent creating the campaign and also calling on the campaign. But in some cases, you'll find that you're creating the campaign for other people to call on. This is where you would invite those other people to the campaign, invite these agents. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. You can simply type in their email address or addresses separated by comma and space. Or you can provide them with this URL, which they'll paste into a web browser. And that'll get them to the correct place to log into this campaign. Up top, available agents. These are agents that I've used in previous campaigns. So anytime you add an agent to a campaign or invite an agent to a campaign, CallFire will save that information globally so that I don't have to enter it in every time. I can just select them up here or deselect them if I change my mind. Another option is you can upload a list via Excel or CSV if you have a, a large number of agents and it's just not plausible to type them in manually. Regardless of the way that you send the invite, you can save it as a group. Let's say I want two agents on this one and I know that I'm gonna be using these two agents in the future. I would save them as a group so that I don't have to go through this process manually each time. 
For this campaign, I'm going to be the only one calling on it, so I'm not going to invite any agents for the time being. I'm just going to save and continue. And this is where we're going to add the contacts to the campaign. These are the, the numbers that we're going to call. So the most common way this is done is by uploading a file. It has to be a CSV or Excel file. Within that, a couple of things to note. All the pertinent information that you want to see on the screen while speaking to each contact, you should include in the first 10 columns of the Excel file that you're uploading. So for example, uh, you would have column A be the first name, column B be the last name, column C be the phone number, column D be the company, so on and so forth. Whatever I want to see, whatever information I want to see for that person while I'm speaking to them should be included in the first 10 columns. Those first 10 columns will display on the interface as I go to that person. It doesn't matter what order it in, so it could be column A with the phone numbers, column B with the names and so forth, just that everything respective to that is in the same column. So all of the phone numbers would be in column A, all of the first names would be in column B and so on and so forth. Another way you could do it is you could choose a list. So these are lists that I have globally uploaded to my Qualifier account saved. Add contacts the same way. These are contacts that I already have on my Qualifier account that I could choose one by one. I could filter from a previous campaign. Let's say I ran a campaign a week ago and I want to call all the people that live answered on that one. Filtering it from that previous campaign will create what we call a subset, where it isolates only those numbers. Or lastly, I could copy and paste. I could literally type in the numbers separated by comma and space. The most common way, again, is to upload. For this presentation, we'll just choose a list. This is a list I already have on my account. Hit submit. So anytime you upload a list or choose a list or add context, however you do it, Callfire will validate the list. Basically what that means is we're going to scrub the list for duplicates and invalid numbers. And we're also going to have you agree to the terms of service as a step in that validation process. Just by checking the box here, then you hit continue. Then it'll have you hit complete upload. And you can see that my list is now uploaded this campaign. So we'll go save and continue. So lastly, advanced options. Transfers, what that means is Callfire gives you the ability to transfer a phone call to another number while you're on the dollar. So say you have an agent that's on the call and the person they're talking to needs to speak to you or needs to speak to a supervisor or needs to speak to someone else. Allowing the agent to transfer the number, and we'll, we'll see how that looks in the second half here. Allowing an agent to transfer the number gives them the ability to enter in your phone number, the phone number that they want it to go to, and send that call there while they can then go on to the next person on the dialer. You can also have it a predetermined number so that instead of having to type in the number every time, you can have it so that they can only transfer to your number. Local time dialing restrictions, default 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. What that means is call fire will automatically stop the campaign after these times. In most instances, you'll find that this isn't necessarily something that needs to be enabled. Uh, reason being, you and or your agents are going to be in complete control of when the dialer is going. You're going to be the ones joining it. and won't be calling without you doing that, so you'll know what time it is that you're doing that. But uh, in the event that this is printed into your use case, you can simply just check this box, and you can adjust the times just by the drop-down there. Automatic retry. Let's say you get a busy and or a no answer. You can tell the system, I want to call these people back at a given interval. So let's go, let's go 40. Say I want to call the people back 40 minutes and I want to try two times if I don't get them back the initial time. Lastly here, smart drop. Smart Trips is a feature that allows your agents to leave a pre-recorded message on answering machines and or voicemails when, you're, when you encounter those. So you're on the dialer, voicemail picks up. If you have a Smart Drop enabled, you can simply click the Smart Drop button, which we'll go over what that looks like in a, a few minutes here. 
and the system leaves your pre-recorded message at the correct time while allowing you to go onto the dialer. So it saves time and it saves energy instead of having to leave a live message every time the, the system will leave your pre-recorded message. The most important thing to consider with SmartDrop is if you're a business calling a consumer, there are certain legalities around leaving pre-recorded messages specifically. The essence of the law is that you have, you have to have expressed prior consent from the person that you're talking to to leave them a pre-recorded message. So you can call them without that consent and connect live or leave a live answer on their answering machine, but you cannot leave a pre-recorded message unless they have given you consent to do so. So if you don't have that consent, you don't want to use SmartDrop to make sure that you're, you're staying compliant. If you do have that consent, you would simply just hit select a message and you can hit create a new message. Three different ways to do so. You can upload your own file, which has to be an MP3 or WAV format, less than three megabytes large. You can record it via phone, which is the most common way, or you can use text-to-speech you, where you type it out and the system will speak it for you. I already have a text-to-speech that I can use here. You can play it. This is an example of smart drop. So let's say I like that, then I would hit start now. So hitting start now will take me to my campaign dashboard where I'll see that webinar I just created is now running. The status of running simply means that I can now log in and start dialing. So I'm not being billed yet just because it's running. It just means I'm simply ready to log in. Let's say for, for whatever reason I, I wasn't ready, I didn't want any of my agents to log in, I can simply just check the box next to it and hit stop. That'll put it in a stopped position, which will not allow anyone to log into it until I'm ready. So if I'm ready, I can just check the box and hit start and put it back in a running state. So from the dashboard, I'll simply just click the name here and that'll give me an overview of what I just created. So we got the call records. These are just the phone numbers that I uploaded. Agents would appear here. If I invited any of the agents, they would appear here. I can also add and remove agents. Same as I could in the, the setup, you can do it after the fact here, or I can provide them with this link. For some reason, I didn't grab that initially. I can access that here. Contacts just gives me a view of the contacts that I uploaded. Script, same thing. Questions, same thing, just giving me an overview of what I've already created and allowing me a chance to edit anything if need be. Go back to the over here. So from an administrative point, that's really all it entails, creating a campaign. Now let's let's take a moment to address any questions. Looks like we've had someone with some audio issues. Um, Jason, this is a live recording. I'm going to type this to you just in case you still can't hear me. And uh, yes, we will be posting this to the site. If anyone needs to reference this, reference this later. All right, so it looks like that's all the questions we have so far. So we'll go ahead and just move into the administrative side of things here. So now that we are, excuse me, the agent side of things. So now that we've completed the administrative side of things, all we'll do at this point, we got the campaign ready to go running. We'll just hit join campaign. Now, when I hit join campaign, what's going to happen is the system's going to call me. I'm going to pick up that phone call and stay on that phone call. That's how I'm connected to the dialer. The system's going to call a predetermined number that I already have stored globally. If I hadn't had that number stored globally or if it's the first time using the cloud call center, it'll ask you what number you want to connect with. So I'm going to hit join campaign here. You'll see that it's connecting me. Now, let's say I didn't want it to call this number. I would just hit change my phone number here. So that's the system calling me. I'm going to answer that phone call. It's telling me that I'm now connected and to click begin dialing when I'm ready to go. So a couple things before I do that. You'll notice here on the screen I have a little preview of my script, the questions that I set up. I have a notes section here. Begin dialing is what I'll press when I'm ready to go. Across the bottom here it has a little control panel as well. It'll show me my name, the number I'm connected with, 
the time of my session. This is the time that I'm being billed. And session here, if I'm ready to, to leave or done for the day, I'll just hit that. You can also simply hang up the phone and the system will end the session. This is a settings panel and a help panel. So let's hit begin dialing to get going. All right, so our first contact here, Will Smith. So I can see his phone number in the top left here. Underneath there is an option to add him to the do not call list and also schedule a callback. So let's say Will doesn't want me calling him again. I would just click add to DNC. Now I'll ensure that I don't call him anymore. Even if I upload him to subsequent campaigns, the system will recognize that I've added him to my do not call list. So it looks like Will's annual income is $75,000. let us say he's in the tech industry and he is not an existing customer. So just an example here, that's a numeric value for the response type text box. So I can just type out the answer or multiple choice here. So going back to when you're creating the campaign, those are examples of the three different options you can have as a response type. Or you can add notes in a little note box here. Couple other things on the screen here. This information, if you remember from the administrative part, this is the stuff that I was talking about that's on the first 10 columns of the Excel or CSV file that I uploaded. So column A, I had Will, column B, Smith, column C is company and so on and so forth. So whatever information you wanna display right here, you'll have in the first 10 columns of the Excel file that you upload to the campaign. You also have an option to take a break here Let's say you have to take a short break, but you don't want to end the session. You simply click that. It'll pause it and it'll allow you to resume it. Once you resume, it'll go right to the next call. Hello. You reached the voicemail box for best match. So it looks like we got best voicemail. So I'll hit the smart drop. That'll drop my message on her voicemail and then allow me to go to the next call. To go to the next call, simply hit next call up here. And once the campaign's done, it'll automatically log you out and take you right back here to the campaign dashboard, which will hit that refresh button. Looks like my phone hung up inadvertently. So the campaign's still running at 50%. My phone got disconnected. If I want to get back into it here, I'll just hit join campaign. Begin I dialing. Start your session. Hi, I'm Paul Jones. As you can see on the right hand side of your screen, under the word connected, I work for. All right, so I'll ask Paul Jones. Now that I hang up again, it's going to take me back to the dashboard. So once the campaign is done, just refresh the screen here. You can go back into it, show you a display of all the calls that were made, give you a call records, dispositions of each. After the fact, I can still add contacts to this campaign. Let's say I have more people that I need to call later. And simply do so by the same steps. Just hit add contacts here. The same steps to upload them. And you can see that I'm 100% down here, four out of four. So that pretty much sum summarizes the, the agent interface. It's uh, relatively simple by design. If anyone has any questions, feel free to type them in the GoToWebinar control panel. We'll leave that open for a few moments. If not, that concludes today's presentation. I hope that you found this helpful and enjoy the rest of your day. So we got a first question here. Can you export the list after it is completed? Yeah, so once you go into, let's say you're done with the campaign and it'll change it to finished when you're done. You go to call records. 
Within the call records is export option right here. You just click call details, exports it to an Excel file or CSV rather, excuse me. And this is what it'll look like. So it'll give me all the information of this campaign. Span that out a little bit. Give me the result, any information that I stashed, the recording link right here as well. So on and so forth. So yeah, to answer your question, you just hit the export details right here. And you can also export the recordings to a zip folder, or you can go to the details on each and listen to them one by one or download them one by one if you don't want to export it in a global sense. You can view them or download them or listen to them one by one. Second question here, if multiple agents are calling off one list, they won't call the same person, correct? The numbers will be generated to each agent. That is correct. That's a great question. So if you have a team of agents calling on one campaign, the system will intuitively know who's connected to what number and will take each agent to the next number. So you're in, you're in no danger of calling the same people twice. The system will go through the list one time and assign each agent, so to speak, to the next person as they become available. All right, thank you, Chelsea. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right, so we'll leave this open for a few more moments. If you have any questions that arise, just feel free to type them in. Otherwise, that'll conclude today's presentation. Enjoy the rest of your day.